You know, if you tell me like 20 years ago when I started working with Drupal that I will be sitting in a room at DrupalCon actually talking with the CTO of the Drupal Association in the same table, I would believe that I was just drunk, you know. Um, my name is Alex Moreno. I work for the Drupal Association. As I said, I have like uh, nearly two decades of experience in, in Drupal. And I've been working during the last uh, 12 months on innovation and doing some research which complements quite what, well con, with um, what Irina has been uh, doing as well. That's why Tim and Irina, is, uh, they are joining me. Irina, you want to introduce? Hi, my, hi, my name is Irina Zaks. I'm a web developer and open source evangelist. Uh, I'm co-founder of Fibonacci Web Studio. Um, our studio builds web applications and websites for research and academia at Stanford, UCSF, and other universities. Um, I'm Drupal contributor since 2008, and I'm currently co-maintainer of Pete's module. Uh, you want I'll go ahead and introduce myself really quickly as well. I'll be here for just the first part of the uh, conversation today, but I am Tim Lennon, or Hestinet, at Drupal.org, and uh, I'm the CTO of the Drupal Association, as Alex mentioned. Uh, so I've been engaging uh, with uh, both Irina and Alex over the last couple of years to understand and measure contribution, contribution friction, and some things we can do to improve innovation. So this is, oh, this is the, the agenda that we are going to go through today. Uh, we are going to talk about innovation, as I said. Uh, if this is not what you were expecting, you still have time to, to run. <laughs> um, we are going to talk about why we care about innovation, why it is key for the Drupal Association, and it's been a focus on the past 12 months, at least for uh, my own work for, for the Drupal Association. We need to understand as well the context what do we understand about innovation in Drupal and in open source? And I'm going to introduce a concept um, that worked in these 12 months. Um, I've come up, which is the long and short tail of the open source contribution. One important part of all of this work is the contribution held dashboards that you may have heard about because uh, we published this at the beginning of the year. And then Irina will talk about the contribution friction analysis and the research that uh, Irina and Tim uh, has been doing in the last months. So I want to speak to why the Drupal Association wanted to focus on uh, contribution friction uh, as part of the innovation effort. So as you may know, if you attended any of the Drupal Association board meetings or followed along with our blogs, um, we made innovation acceleration a part of our strategic plan uh, a couple of years ago and have been focusing on that in a number of ways. And that aligns with a lot of different initiatives you've seen, improving the tooling on Drupal.org, if you're a project maintainer, the move to GitLab CI, uh, the move to GitLab issues coming soon. It goes along with uh, projects like Starshot, where we're trying to collectively organize the community around a common goal, as Dries talked about in his keynote. Um, so in particular, why this is important is because we know that things are not perfect <laughs> um, and that they are, in fact, less than perfect in ways that we need to understand before we can move the needle. Um, we know that a lot of new contributors don't make their first contribution until they've had a Drupal.org account for more than a year. Uh, we know that people often bounce off of core contribution because they perceive it as impenetrable, too difficult to understand and move through. Um, and we know uh, that sometimes, for some reason that we weren't at first sure of, um, even a major initiative can crawl to a halt. And that is something in particular that uh, Irina and I studied um, in a publication that's going to be coming out soon. So, you know, before we say, hey, we're going to move forward, we're going to try and move really quickly and accelerate all these cool and exciting and innovative things, we needed to make sure we weren't going to trip over our own feet. So um, that's kind of my contribution to this piece, is saying, hey, we need to study this, we need to bring some data to it, and working together with Irina and Alex to do that. Now, unfortunately, I do have to run to a main stage um, uh, sound check in a moment, so I'm setting up uh, Alex and Irina to take it from here, but thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Tim, for, for joining us. I'm super grateful to have you here, and as well to uh, you know, have had the opportunity to work for the Drupal Association this two months. So, innovation. 
So why so much fuss? Um, why is it important innovation, right? And in the context of open source, but especially in, in Drupal. And to answer that, I'm actually going to ask you a question. What all these pictures here have in common? And I will give you some clues, right? They have all disappeared. They are obsolete. They are 20 years old or they are all boring. So uh, actually they haven't all of them at least disappeared. We can see one of them at least that is still there. This is interesting because if you look at the picture, uh, we may have similar technologies today that have in a way a bolt. And then we can discuss, and we were discussing when we were preparing this session, uh, Irina and myself, about actually the, they are still here, but they have been kind of replaced in a way. They have uh, not evolved, because actually the only one that has evolved in the picture is, is Drupal. All of the rest, uh, they, have, uh, they have disappeared, like the iPod. We all have an iPod in, in our pockets nowadays with an iPhone. Um, or we have uh, Netflix in instead of uh, VHS. In a way, they are obsolete, except uh, Drupal. The only thing in common between all of them is that they are 20 years old. Actually, Drupal is 23, so it's, it's, um, it's awesome, right, that we have a technology that, you know, if you look at all of them and many more technologies that haven't stand for the, the pass of time. And the only one which is boring is, uh, is actually Drupal, but don't take it wrong. Boring is actually a good thing. Uh, if you look at the article, um, Boring Technology, it talks about technologies that are stable, that are proved, that you can trust on them, right? And this is actually Drupal. So why we care about innovation? Uh, the conclusion is that in order to survive, we need to keep moving, we need to stay uh, relevant, we need to keep pushing forward. How do we do that? And how do we do that in open source and in Drupal? So we need to understand the, the context. I think we all know uh, how Drupal works in a way with uh, the contribution ecosystem. And uh, traditionally, innovation has come, not because someone came and said, hey, I'm going to be innovative, I'm going to create the last big thing in core, in Drupal. It has come more from the uh, point of view of someone created something, creating something in uh, some room in Belgium. Actually, this is how Drupal started, as we, we know. And at some point, all these inventions, they came into core, like for example, views or CCK, which is now the content types that we have in Drupal and we are all familiar, right? That didn't exist uh, at the beginning. ECA, which is uh, the events, or, or web forms, right? Some of them, again, are now in, in part of core and we take them for granted. But actually, they, they didn't start as an innovation. They started as someone working on, on an idea on trying to solve something. So to understand how innovation has succeeded in Drupal, we need to actually understand how contribution works. And this applies, again, for Drupal and for, for open source in general. Um, we are talking about decentralized communities. Uh, we are talking about people working in, in the numbers of hundreds, sometimes thousands. I think it was Anoop a few weeks ago from the Drop Times who came up with a, a number of how many contributors we have in the, in the community. I think it was around the 100, 200,000, something like that. Um, and we are talking about thousands of modules and related projects, not just necessarily only on Drupal, but in the open source ecosystem. So in a way, innovation occurs in islands. So as a conclusion, innovation in open source means that we need to increase and improve the way that uh, we are creating or we are doing contribution. And how to do that is relatively simple, but it's a very difficult question to, to answer, which is uh, we need to make it easier to contribute, we need to remove blockers, and we need to reduce the friction that exists when people try to contribute. And that's where um, I introduced the, the article that it will be published in, in a few days, where I talk about uh, the long tail and the short tail of the contribution pipeline, again, in open source, because contribution in the companies, in the enterprise, may be very different to how it occurs in, in open source. 
The short and long tail is a marketing inspired concept which comes from my early years when I was working in, in marketing. Actually, my career started as a marketeer. Um, and in marketing, if you're familiar with marketing online, um, you will know that uh, the short and long tails refer to the number of keywords when you are trying to position them in, in Google. So when you are trying, when you are talking about this short tail, you are talking about a few small keywords that uh, creates a big impact on your results. While the long tail is just the opposite. A lot of uh, keywords should be relatively easy to um, kind of position, but it creates as well a lot of impact. And in open source, it happens in a very similar way. We have the long tail where we have a lot of individuals making a lot of changes. Some of the, or most of the time, those changes are going to be small, but not necessarily. And again, they occur in big numbers, and they create a huge impact for the community. And again, the example will be the huge amount of uh, contributed modules that we have in Drupal, and the thousands of contributors. Normally, those changes are relatively small, but if you put them in context, the impact to the community is massive. On the other hand, we have the short tail, which is a smaller number, smaller number of contributors, for example, the core contributors. Um, and the updates there uh, are harder, are, they take longer, most of the time to um, be fixed or be, be contributed, but potentially they are more impactful that, uh, than, than uh, the previous changes on the long tail. Here, we have to play with the strategy, right? The same as we are playing on marketing in terms of, okay, I think that we are going to have a lot of um, small keywords that are going to be very easy to position. It will take me uh, very little work to put them on Google, um, while maybe I have one or two of the keywords that they are going to be a lot harder to, to position. In open, source, in open source, we can talk about a similar concept where we need to have a strategy in terms of what we are going to uh, tackle a um, lot of, um, long tail um, contribution or, or just the, the short tail. And reducing the friction on both tails is a completely different uh, animal. It's a completely different problem. In the long tail, for example, it requires guiding a lot of contributors and finding friction where those contributors may get blocked. While in the short tail, because we are talking about a smaller number of, uh, of people, they may have uh, completely different problems. Like, for example, they may have a lot of issues, which I think it is the case. Um, they may have a lot of issues to work on, but not enough resources. And that's uh, some of the things, for example, that the Drupal Association is trying to, to find answers to, how to you know, get more resources, get more money, uh, so uh, impact in Drupal can be uh, higher. Some of the things that I've been doing this year on the long tail it includes the contribution health dashboards, the bounty program, the user onboarding improvements that we've done and I will uh, show on this uh, presentation, how we communicate with our users, and we had a lot of discussions around documentation with the innovation working group. And actually you heard Tris talking this, uh, this DrupalCon about uh, this problem that we need to improve documentation. And in terms of uh, reducing contribution in the short tail, um, I'm going to give you two examples. One which is action driven, driven, which is the, the Pittsburgh initiative. That, um, I'm not going to talk about this one because we have a closer session tomorrow during the keynote initiative, and I will be giving an update on, uh, on those six projects. And then we have a theoretical part um, represented by Irina with her work on the contribution friction analysis. So in this part of the presentation, we'll talk about our research related to improving velocity of code contributions. Every project wants to speed up development process. The question is, how do we do this? I participated in over 100 contribution sprints at various Drupal camps and Drupal cons, where I had an opportunity to observe all kinds of contribution trends. And I always want to take this empirical data collected during 20 years of Drupal development for a deeper analysis so we can understand in what direction we should be going 
to increase velocity of speed contributions. Velocity is speed with direction. So if we're not moving in the right direction, higher speed doesn't bring us to our goal quicker. And it has been known for thousands of years, as Seneca said. To quantify improvements, we need to set a baseline first. And then we can measure changes against this baseline. Great example of setting a baseline is classic case uh, from 2016 from Spotify when backstage system was introduced. Time to 10th commit for a new onboarded developer increased from, decreased from 60 days to about two weeks. And this is a great example of setting baseline doing improvements and then searching results. So first step for us was to set baseline with contribution health dashboards. So we are talking about starting to do changes on the contribution ecosystem with the long and short tail, and all those concepts that I was introducing. Um, but actually before we can even do anything, we should actually know where we are and how we evolve, right? That's why uh, at the beginning of the year, we introduce the contribution health dashboards where we are kind of giving some uh, parameters, talking about the health of the uh, contribution ecosystem. This, I would say, is the uh, highlight for, for this year in terms of uh, the impact. It has been very well received. And actually, you can see uh, on this keynote, these uh, graphs were used. And it was used as well in Drupal South by, by Dries himself. So you can imagine that being my baby, this makes me super happy. And this actually, it took a few months to, to develop because the data is in there. Now we are migrating to GitHub, uh, sorry, GitLab. I always make a mistake. And GitLab has some of those dashboards, but actually at the moment the information until we finish the migration is all in Drupal.org, which means, bless you, we have a lot of data, but it is very difficult to extract. So again, it took a lot of uh, a lot of effort to take the data. We have some scripts that makes it actually goes through uh, the whole the huge database in Drupal.org in sandbox, obviously not in, in production. It takes a few hours to get each one of those values, and then there is a manual step to put those values in a spreadsheet and transform them into a graph like the ones that that you are seeing here. There is a lot more information and a lot more graphs on the URL that you, you see there. And if you're interested about uh, the dashboards and how they came alive and the discussions that we have in the innovation working group, uh, you can you can look at that in the, the second link. Nina? Now that we have a baseline, we embarked on our research journey. Tim Lennon and I co-authored an article that presents our insights um, on Drupal code contributions. Today, I will present a trailer. Full article will be published in IEEE magazine next month, and feel free to reach out to me directly if you want to get a copy earlier. So goal of open source project is faster code contributions. Goal of our study was to examine contribution pattern Based on this pattern, identify and quantify processes that make a difference between success and failure, and propose new procedures that can accelerate development of new features. So the focus of our study was modeling processes. We have selected Drupal announcement module. Uh, it has been a contrib module in, started in Drupal 9, and it was added to core in Drupal 10. And it's very important module that allows communication, direct communication with Drupal users via admin UI. And it is especially important with Drupal 7 end of life to notify users of important, giving, send them important notifications. We used three uh, data sources, uh, conversation in issue and comments, conversations in Slack, and also we analyzed commits data. And I will be presenting charts and we will be, we are using well-defined uh, software processes uh, that we reference in the article and they correlate with development activities. So this is first chart 
this is distribution of comments in the issue over two years, the timeline of the project. Uh, this chart has a lot of information uh, together. So you can see a uh, number of comments per month with two very clearly seen peaks. Uh, we also show total number of users who commented and each user has a color. And one thing that you can notice right away is that we can see almost complete change of contributors in the middle of the project. Only one user stayed with the project for the whole time. When new cohort needs to learn context from scratch, it slows down development process. And this is something that we want to pay attention when we're doing our improvements. Second chart, slows, uh, second chart shows distributions of messages in Slack and very well corresponds with best practices to the phases that were referenced before planning, uh, before actually coding. And um, last chart that we have uh, shows distributions of commits. Um, it has re reasonably limited use because um, using either number of merge requests or number of code lines for quality of code is a very bad matrix. So the only thing that we can drive here that there was one short contribution in the beginning of the project and then almost entire code was committed after it passed acceptance dates. And this chart shows correlation between work happening in different channels. And we also show here events that might have impacted uh, release cycle, things like release of major Drupal versions uh, and holidays, uh, especially winter, uh, winter holiday season. Um, I can, there's many more details in the paper itself, so I'm gonna move forward to what patterns we discovered from this study. First big observation is that design reviews are not deterministic process and they can change significantly, especially if a cohort of reviewers changes. Fixes that are not committed restart, uh, res reset the cycle of acceptance and go through analysis. So any contribution that is done but waiting for commit uh, makes contribution cycle longer. The, which means that both contributors and reviewers need to be able to act rapidly when uh, development is happening. And then we can see that if key design decisions and acceptance criteria were not documented in the issue, uh, then people very often begin retreading all ground. Based on what we learned from this case study, how can the contribution process be improved? If we can eliminate reasons that lead to resetting review cycles, we can significantly increase velocity of contributions. So three main points here are documenting both acceptance criteria and current status in the issue summary. We often have uh, we often have issues that can have over 100 comments. And if whoever is coming to help need to read through the entire list to figure out current status, uh, if they have to in reinvest this time all, like on every step, it, this time cannot be used towards actual contribution. Second point is we need to have stronger procedures for keeping track of what active issues need uh, review and prioritize them and have better tri uh, triaging based on strategic importance of issues. And tooling. We have lots of automated tools for testing the code, but tracking, acceptan tracking acceptance criteria and notifying key decision makers uh, can be significantly improved. And this automation will help maintain momentum while driving major feature initiative to the finish line. And finish line are key, key words here. So how do we work 
with the long tail. So there is, there is a lot of data here that we can uh, extract and we can um, create action. Uh, let's talk about that at the end of the session. Let me introduce in terms of the long tail the things that we've been doing or I've been doing uh, during this past 12 months with the Drupal Association. First thing is um, we were kind of uh, picking the low hanging fruit, things like the user onboarding improvement. Why this matters? It matters because uh, impressions matter and first impressions matter most. So uh, the goal is we need to onboard users in a more you know, a smooth way, is onboard them faster. We need to increase attention. Uh, and you can't imagine, uh, if you want to be positive about Drupal, you, you have a lot of reasons because we have every day thousands of people. We have a lot of number of uh, new users registering in Drupal. The problem that we have at the moment is that we are not doing a lot to focus on retention, right? To, to make sure that those users uh, stay in our community. And we don't do a lot to improve the visibility of uh, the contribution paths for, for these new users, how uh, they can, you know, give something back. And uh, yeah, for sure, most of them, they won't be interested, but if only 1% of them at some point they get interested by those messages and it's like, okay, I'm going to give back and, you know, they, uh, we welcome them um, as being part of, of here, of this, of, of DrupalCons and everything that is happening here. Imagine the impact for, for the community, right? And for the project. And at the end, we need to attract something that we've been discussing in this DrupalCon as well. Uh, we need to attract uh, new talent. Now, how do we do that? Uh, we've been reviewing the registration process. We've been reviewing the messages and interactions with uh, new and old users. And some of the things that you may have heard already is uh, the change on the registration process. Something that you may have not seen in, in years or in my case even in two decades because I registered once in Drupal, I, ne I never did that again, right? So that process uh, re was in need of a kind of revamp, of just reviewing it before the changes that we did a few, a few weeks ago. Uh, it was a huge email, right? I don't think anyone was reading that email. So we uh, compacted the message in there and we created some landing pages in Drupal.org and that has kind of a double outcome. Once uh, it is more clear what you are offering the user, you are giving them a more clear steps on, hey, you're interested on uh, learning about Drupal, you're interested on downloading the system, why don't you try without downloading, right? Which is as well an option. And the other is that now we are able to measure and we are able to measure uh, what the user is doing, if they are going to um, a specific landing page, if they stay after that looking at more pages or they just go, right? And that information, as an old marketeer that I am, uh, it is key in order to improve. And this is not the end. This is just one of the steps. We need to do a lot more steps. Um, and I like, for example, to show the Mautic example. They are doing really great in terms of uh, user onboarding because if you try the trial, you will receive a welcome email, not different to what we have in the uh, Drupal ecosystem, in Drupal.org. But after a week, uh, you will receive a second email. And that email, I found it very welcome and very nice because it's kind of, hey, I know you are interested on, on Mautic. I know that you are trying the system. I think you will be interested in trying this and that, right? So it's giving some tips for new users on how to increase the knowledge and how to uh, increase, uh, at the end, the stickiness of the community, of the Mautic community uh, with that user. So I think we have a lot of lessons to learn from, from Mautic which is good because it's a kind of sister uh, project for, for Drupal. We've been working as well in um, connecting with our users. One of the things that we did a few uh, months ago is uh, I, I launched a poll with some questions in terms of how many roles or what roles you think it would be interesting to capture from, from the user. And I'm talking when you register in Drupal, uh, you will have the option to say, okay, I am a marketeer, I'm a developer, I'm a CTO. To me, the goal was to find how many developers we were onboarding, but actually it was interesting to launch uh, this poll and get information, get, get feedback from the rest of the community, because who knows, in uh, a few years, if we may be interested, or in a few months, 
we may be interested as well on in getting information in terms of, hey, you are a CTO, uh, why don't you try this or that, right? So at the end, um, we are kind of future-proofing us ourselves in order to, again, who knows. This information will be available for new user registering, but the idea is that we should be able to um, get back to our current users and try to get information from them. Just, for example, clicking on the, hey, what are you, a developer, a backend, a CTO? And in the same line of improving uh, contribution, one of the things that I've been doing this year with the Drupal Association is uh, having a lot of meetings with, uh, with partners and agencies. And one interesting thing I, I was finding is that I was pretty much every time getting the same question, which is, hey, we already contribute, we want to do more, but actually when we are contributing, how do we make sure that we are doing it the right way? How do we make sure that our contribution is the most impactful possible for, for the project. That's the reason, first, why I created the Contributor Guide, which is a kind of living document where it gives guidance in terms of this will be the most impactful uh, projects uh, and includes uh, things in core, um, it will include innovative ideas at some point, it includes strategic initiatives, things that for the Drupal Association is important, and things that uh, if you would like to include in here, you could give us uh, feedback as well. So it's a kind of living document again, and it's open for, for feedback. And on this context, uh, we created the, the Bounty pro Program, and this started as uh, many discussions as well with the Innovation Working Group. And the idea was to give that guidance, but at the same time, prove that uh, we could somehow poor innovation, somehow push for uh, the issues that, again, are more impactful for, for the project. So we had a few meetings with, um, or I'm talking about Slack messages, <laughs> mostly, um, but we, we tried to get feedback from uh, the core committer team. We selected a few issues, and then we launched the Bounty program. The Bounty program is pretty much um, a kind of a contest I wouldn't call it contest, but in, in essence, you have a few issues where if you contribute to them, you will get an extra uh, number of credits. I think we selected five times the number of credits. But the, I wouldn't say surprise, because in a way I, I could see that this was going to happen, uh, especially because companies in general are interested in the, doing the right thing. But a part of that, the the Drupal Association doesn't have many resources, but one of the things that we have actually is the credit system, and it's proving very valuable. So when we launched the program, we could see some of the issues that were there for, uh, some of them like five or six years, right? They were created a long time ago, and some of them were sleeping. There was not a lot of activity going on in there. We launched the program, and pretty much immediately, and then a few days after that, we saw activity, a lot of activity on those issues. And actually one of them that was, I think I remember, five or six years old, it got fixed uh, two weeks, three weeks. So you can imagine that this is kind of proving, right, that the, the concept is actually working. And the other result that we must be happy is that we were having a lot of discussions and a lot of concern as well from, from the core committer team in terms of is this going to be abused, right? Um, we know the problems with the spam, with trying, people trying to game the system. I think the majority, I don't think I know, the majority of companies and individuals are trying to do the right thing, so they don't abuse the system, but we just need one or two that are trying to you know, game, to do the wrong thing, to create a lot of noise. The nice thing is this didn't happen here. It's a small scale uh, pilot, that's true as well, but it proves again that you know, we are on the right path. Right, so what is next? So what's our possible next steps on both fronts, uh, short tail and long tail? Uh, from the research point of view, uh, we would like to extend, use the methodology that we developed for this one particular project to extend it to other projects, refine data analysis, uh, see more trends, and then release this tool to module maintainers so they can check their project against this metrics and make changes 
to allow them to move faster in the right direction. And um, sky's the limit. Uh, automation, AI, is AI automation, is automation AI. Um, there's like all kind of ideas to help improve contribution process. Um, when I worked as a project manager for GitLab Acceleration Initiative, uh, Drupal uh, made a contribution to GitLab itself. We needed a feature, and GitLab itself is open source project. Um, and one of the tools that GitLab is using extensively is GitLab Triage Project, which works very good and is very helpful for automating notifications and connecting reviewers and developers. And when issues are moved to GitLab, uh, it would be a great tool to use to improve contribution process. Uh, there's all kind of AI things happening. There's Drupal AI community initiatives. There's lots of attempts to use AI to help with documentation. And uh, one of the ideas was to have, to train an open source LLM to have better Drupal context and train to be helpful with Drupal issues. And on the so in the short tail or the things that we've been doing at the Drupal Association, what is next? So um, I'm leaving the, actually the Drupal Association because this was a short engagement. That, that doesn't mean that innovation is not still a key um, priority in, 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 the, in the association, right? So you can expect a lot of more things happening in the next, next few months, things that I would love and actually, I'm going to try to stay involved in things like the contribution health dashboards, which I think um, it's, uh, it's an important baseline, and it has received quite a lot of good feedback. We need to update that, uh, ideally quarterly. As I explained before, it takes a little bit of effort. It's just a manual process. You need a Drupal.org database um, on a sandbox environment, and you need some time. Like every time I launch the scripts for just getting uh, some specific parameters, it takes five, six, eight hours. So it's a long process and it's manual. And then putting all that data in spreadsheets and it's still at the moment, it's still um, not a hard job, but it takes some time. So ideally, I would love to see that automated. Um, we can begin start to start using the research results from Irina and, and Tim. Uh, I think there are, there are a lot of data in there that can be uh, useful and then use both the uh, contribution health dashboards to prove that we are going in the right direction. And then uh, the bounty program is one of the, my child's that I'm most uh, um, proud, right? So I don't know if it will be possible, but I would love to see that uh, like a second, a second phase or even a third phase. Um, and things that we were discussing yesterday with uh, yes, in terms of where that could um, move forward. Like for example, I would love to see some automation there as well. But again, we have the problem with um, some bad actors trying to game the system, so we need to be very careful on what we introduce in there. But I think there is a um, huge potential, um, and especially huge potential to guide people to do the right thing. So um, as long as you know we stay cautious on the next steps and we keep doing incremental small steps, I think we should be, we should be safe. So that brings us to the end of the session. Thanks a lot for, for joining, and uh, do you have any, any questions? Do you think this was helpful? What do you think about the long tail, short tail? Um, I don't think anyone has used that concept. I don't know if it's silly. I will publish the article in the next days. So any feedback on that is going to be uh, very welcomed. Yes. Uh, you mean sorry? I don't remember if I read it. Maybe, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's great. Um, I will read it. I will read it. I've been doing this like with Tim and we were, I was receiving, I always, I've been grateful to work for the Drupal Association, especially for Tim's figure in there, because he's been a mentor to me. And we've been working on the, uh, on these concepts. Um, 
I have probably read your article, but um, probably very long time ago. Okay, it's recorded, so I will, I, will, I will ask after the session because I want to read it now. I think I have a question there. That's Irina's work. You want to? Um, you mentioned the backstage. Sorry. Uh, which case study? Okay, so the research is coming out in IEEE magazine uh, in June, but I'm happy to give you author's copy today. There are some publishing guidelines that don't allow me to <coughs> put it, attach it to the post before it has been published in the magazine, but I have a PDF. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Yes, please. Uh, so it has to be a contributor guide. I'm just glancing through it. I saw, for example, Google Hacks is one of the things. And just kind of applying it to my personal interest, it seems like so often I'll come across an issue to me that has had no activity for 10 years. And is there some way between your two initiatives that if I do Google A funny story, I had a few credits assigned a few months ago, and when I checked the issue, it was something that I did in Capgemini in 2012. I completely forgot what I did. I had to go through what did I do right for someone to give me credit, right? It's a difficult question to answer. Um, I think the bounty program could help in a way. Yes, you want? Yes, you want to join us in the conversation? <laughs> that would be easier. One of the things, for example, If you can quickly introduce yourself. So um, everyone yeah, knows so um, my name is Jess. I'm XJM on Drupal.org, and I am one of the release managers for Drupal Core. So this is more in my wheelhouse than, although it's definitely related to the DA problem at large. Um, so the short answer is no, there's no guarantee. Um, now, we have recently made the switch to merge requests. So um, the, the, if an issue is already has a merge request associated with it, that's a sign that there's been some activity on the issue and then it might be going somewhere. But this is also an automatable task, right? Getting it up to date, unless there's a significant number of merge requests, it's mostly automatable. So we're moving in that direction for that particular step. However, the best thing to do in that scenario is to triage the issue for what else is outstanding. So there's a patch there, what didn't happen? Why did it get stuck? Did it get stuck because someone on the issue was concerned with the approach? Did it get stuck because there was just no peer reviewer to come back and review it? And in that case, the um, needs review initiative that they mentioned is a really good resource. It's needs-review-q in there. So you can go in there and say, you know, this issue is awaiting review, hasn't been resolved for a long time. But really the best thing to do is try to read the issue and figure out what's going on with it. And if it's a bug and you can't figure out what the status of the issue is, then there's some great triage procedures that the Bug Smash initiative uses to go through and sort of say, okay, can I reproduce this? Do I have enough information to reproduce it at all? Um, if so, do what information is needed, post back and see if the person who posted it 10 <coughs> years ago is still available to try to fix it. And then if I can reproduce it, then trying to figure out what was missing in the first place that this issue got stalled out. Um, and a lot of times it's just a lack of a peer reviewer, which is why this needs review queue initiative has made such a difference. And that's the other thing that actually also I wanted to point out about the announcement of it is sort of a strange choice for a case study because it's a lot different from um, a lot of other things. But I think one of the main stalling out factors there too was the lack of peer reviewers from the get-go for the work because it was an initiative that the Drupal Association identified as critical for them, but like no one else in the community really had any interest or cared about it that much, even though it, was providing, it would provide value, but it wasn't like an obvious value proposition. And so it didn't like organically attract people in the queue to be interested in it. So it came down a lot of like asking the core committers and it's like, well, there's not really anything for us to do yet. So um, 
it, that's one of the things that I think would be interesting to apply that same sort of pattern to different initiatives and compare the different kinds of trends because announcement speed is not representative. Anyways, I hope that answers your question. Um, bug smash initiative, uh, issue triage at this event. If there's anyone doing a table for it on contribution day tomorrow, this is a great resource um, to try to work on something that might actually get fixed so you get that experience and so forth. Um, and then working on the strategic initiatives because those have you know a driving force behind them somewhere to make sure that stuff gets reviewed. Thanks a lot, yes. Uh, so I stay close because maybe you want to kick me if I say this, but one of the things that we've been discussing this year is, and tell me if it's a very bad idea, but uh, like this will require as well work, right? But talking about what I call the long tail, and if you don't like that, you can kick me as well. Um, but we were discussing, for example, about um, you create an issue, and like in a few days or weeks, as short as possible, you remind the user, like, hey, someone has created a, a merge request, why don't you review it? You know, giving reminders um, to the users, because that, that will affect like hundreds of uh, merge requests, you couldn't do it. It's not sustainable for core. Right, no, I'm, I'm talking about the contribut uh, contribution, uh, contributed project. ecosystem, yeah, yeah. It's more about, that, that's why I make the difference between the short and the long tail, right? Talking about the huge number of contributed yeah. models, that's yes, the other bone that I have to pick with you is that core contribution is not the short tail. There are 4,000 contributors to core a year, so it's not actually, like there's short and long tails within that <laughs> um, yeah, as yeah. well. So, and, and you'll see this, I guess the same like major patterns repeated within the queues, but it's it definitely, they're, they're two very different problems to solve between trying to get a core issue when it's one among tens of thousands sitting open there waiting versus trying to get something solved with a contributed project with a completely different set of problems. And I think that was something that you mentioned yesterday that was very important, which is that you've, you've got, just like it was for CI, you have a different set of problems that you need to solve for the two different parts. Thank you so much, yes. And you didn't kick me, thank you. <laughs> um, it's been a privilege to have uh, Tim, the CTO, and, and Jess in here as well. Thanks a lot for, for your... Um, contribution. Uh, we are out of time, so uh, still unless someone kicks out of uh, this room. Anyone has any other question? Nope. Then thanks a lot. <laughs>